the first sign of a bank failing, you'll find that the bonds will start collapsing in value because bondholders are trying to get out. Large depositors will just transfer the deposits elsewhere. In other words, they will create the very conditions that lead to the collapse of the bank. I think, I mean, the role of central banks in this basically is they have to ensure the integrity of the complete commercial banking system. If anyone fails, then the central bank has a huge, great problem on its hands. We saw this particularly with the Lehman crisis. For whatever reason, the Fed decided that they needed to make an example of a bank uh, when all these banks were falling over and they picked on Lehman. And the consequences of that were really pretty terrible. I mean, it was a, I think it was a big mistake on the Fed's part. In this country, the Bank of England even rescued small banks. It made sure that no bank went under. Mm. And it is a primary function of a central bank to ensure that uh, a commercial bank doesn't go under and that depositors are protected. Now, I know that uh, depositors are, in theory, um, guaranteed by various deposit protection schemes. Um, I don't know what it is in Canada, but in this country, we're looking at about, I think, £85,000. Any deposits, deposit values above that are not protected. Mm. There again, you see, there are complications because if you've got more than one deposit, they total more than that. The banks are related in some way, like one might be a subsidiary of another, or they may um, operate under some sort of common license. Then, you know, that's treated as one deposit. You, you know, you, you're not going to get two lots of coverage. Uh, mm. So there are various wrinkles that you've got to be really aware of. I think the biggest risk, um, because I I really do think that um, the central banks learned the lesson of Lehman. You do not let a bank go under. It's as simple as that. And there's no reason for them to do so. Uh, But I think the wild card in this is the legislation that was passed um, at the behest of the G20 in all the G20 states, uh, whereby, in the words of Gordon Brown, who was our prime minister at the time, Um, You know, the taxpayer shouldn't be on the hook for all the misdeeds of bankers. I mean, that's an emotional, I'd say that's an emotional um, comment Mm -hmm. from a politician. But the result is bail-in legislation. And all I can say is that if any central bank decides to try and bail in a commercial bank, then they're going to just create an enormous crisis. I like to think that uh, commercial banks through the Bank of International Settlements um, have probably agreed between them that in the event of a banking crisis, the bail-in procedures will not be pursued. But I have no guarantee that that's the case. I have no guarantee that one of the G20 might not have been listening properly. (laughs) Define what a bail-in is for people that might not be familiar with that word. Yes, sure. Well, a bailout is simple. Let's start with that. Um, And that a bailout basically is central bank um, basically takes on board all the losses of um, a failing bank, whether it puts it into a bad bank or, you know, sort of restructures it somehow. But the point is that all deposits are guaranteed. In the case of a bail-in, the idea is that the burden of the rescue should not fall on the central bank as much as possible. It should fall on the shareholders, it should fall on the bondholders, and it should also fall on the large deposit holders, you know, the ones with, in our case, over 85,000 pounds. Mm-hmm. i just give you an example where that is actually um, very, very bad. I mean, I, I would guess that in Canada, you've got the same sort of thing. You have solicitors' accounts. These are accounts where client money is segregated into a common account Say you're buying a property or something like that, and uh, you would put deposits or the the funds, if you like, from the sale of a house would go into the solicitor's account to begin with before it is sent to you. Now, if a bank goes bust, that account's going to have many millions in it, and that doesn't get rescued. Mm -hmm. You could find that you're caught in the middle of this really nasty situation. There is every reason why this um, bailout procedure should actually go ahead. It just, otherwise, it's just too messy. But bail-ins, bail-ins, the uh, the first sign of a bank failing, you'll find that the bonds will start collapsing in value because bondholders are trying to get out. Large depositors will just transfer the deposits elsewhere. In other words, they will create the very conditions that lead to the collapse of the bank. So bail-ins are actually counterproductive. 
and the other thing is that shareholders just end up being diluted down to zero. So you will see share prices falling in the in, in the stock market. You would see bond values collapsing uh, and you would see a run on the bank. And it's interesting if you look at uh, the recent history of Credit Suisse, most of these um, uh, things have been um, evident there. Uh, um, I mean, Credit Suisse hasn't officially been bailed out, but I think unofficially there has been a lot of um, uh, work going on in the background to ensure that that bank didn't fail, um, including persuading um, uh, some very large shareholders uh, from the Middle East, for example, uh, to support the bank. And I think if the bank can be supported, it is a wonderful opportunity, perhaps, for some of these, um, you know, let's say a, a Middle Eastern potentates, uh, you know, who want actually to own their own bank in Switzerland. I mean, I would have thought there's some attractions for that. So I think that rescue is probably going to be successful. Mm -hmm. Now, having said that, the shares are valued at a very deep discount to uh, the balance sheet book value. Um, I calculated at the worst, it was something like 20% of book value. I mean, that's an 80% discount. <laughs> you know, you only get that if the market's in effect saying, this bank's bust. Mm -hmm. um, there are various other banks in Europe um, on a similar rating, not quite as bad as that, but similar rating. So we're looking at a system where these risks are judged by the market to be actually quite real. Of course, in a bailout, you find that the shareholders actually do lose. I mean, it's as simple as that. They get just diluted right down. They lose in, in, in either case. It's really the treatment of the bondholders and the, uh, the large depositors, which uh, is the difference between a bailout and a bail-in. But Tom, there's something else I would add to this, and that is that um, thanks to uh, all the quantitative easing, the central banks, um, all the major central banks have accumulated very large quantities of bonds on their, um, on their books. In the case of the Bank of Japan, they've also got uh, 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 real estate investment trusts. They've got they've got um, ETFs representing equities. I mean, they've really, but they've been doing it since the year 2000. I mean, this is very substantial. The result is that the fall in markets, the result of rising interest rates, um, has uh, really wiped out all the central bank's equity. I look at the Fed, I look at the Bank of England, I look at the ECB, I look at the Bank of Japan. Now, normally this is not too much of a problem because a central bank can quite easily recapitalize itself uh, with uh, with its government shareholder. But there is a problem in, in Europe, in the Eurozone, and that is that the ECB is not held by any government. It's not owned by government. It's, it's uh, owned by a consortium of uh, national central banks in the Eurozone. And... Um, the problem there is that you do usually require legislation to recapitalize a national central bank. And I can just imagine the conversation uh, in the Bundestag um, as some pesky politician actually says, now, hold on a minute. <laughs> you know, what are you doing about these target two imbalances? You know, and you can immediately see how the whole of this recapitalization process could end up being extremely difficult. Uh, and um, so I think the danger, to my mind, is probably, and there's no guarantee I'm right in this, but probably more with the central banking network than it is with the commercial banking network. I'm assuming that the, that the central banks will do everything they can to bail out any failing um, uh, commercial banks. <laughs>